Russia's war against Ukraine is having knock-on effects on Arctic cooperation and regional security, as seen, for instance, in the March 2022 decision by the members of the Arctic Seven to pause the participation in the Arctic Council. Interstate tension or conflicts arising in non-polar regions are slowly spilling into the Arctic. Indeed, circumpolar geopolitical dynamics have already shifted. So there is now a sort of division between a Russian Arctic on the one hand, and what could be in a way seen as a Nordic North American Arctic, which is the Arctic Seven. This situation also vindicates Russia's posture that the non-Russian Arctic is basically NATO territory. The impact of Russia's war has three major effects on regional security in the Arctic. First, it is slowly eroding the trust in the Kremlin's intentions in the region and making collaboration with Russia very difficult, even for non-politicized is issues, like search and rescue operations, fisheries management, scientific cooperation, or climate change mitigation. Second, governance issues that are linked to the very viability of the Arctic Council are at risk, not least because cooperation with Russia is next to impossible at this stage. But also third, there is a high likelihood of inadvertent escalation, including horizontal escalation to and from the Arctic and to and from the Baltic Sea area, for instance. This could be caused by miscalculation or tactical errors. And this is specifically important in the context of NATO's expansion to Finland and Sweden. Given that Russia is set to chair the Arctic Council until the spring of 2023, then the other coastal areas of the Arctic, the Arctic Seven, must together reassess security and military issues in the region and explore collectively alternative channels for coordination. In this context, the Arctic needs dedicated discussions for military security affairs. Discussions should start between the Arctic Seven. Several pathways to increased military security discussions must be explored. First, trying to shape a common understanding of what constitutes normal or non-threatening military operations. Second, finding the optimum framework and format for, for these discussions. Avoiding over-institutionalization, for instance, while being flexible in terms of working groups. Third, deciding whether the Arctic needs a dedicated military code of conduct, which would basically define the rules of the road and deconfliction activities aimed at increasing transparency and predictability in the region. And four, trying to find the best approach to include and represent external actors, such as non-state actors, and most importantly, indigenous rights holders. Russia's role and place in this ecosystem remains, of course, undetermined at this stage. What we see for the future of Arctic governance is that we need more common political will among the Arctic Seven to discuss regional military security affairs. Hopefully, the expansion of NATO to Finland and Sweden will give renewed impetus to this discussion. Overall, in the absence of cooperation with Russia, deeper coordination and communication between the members of the Arctic Seven will be key to keeping the Arctic stable and secure.